now. Talk real estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm your host, Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing agents who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my co-host Melissa Wallace and I will provide you with my team's unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace and I'm joined live in studio with the one and only Sharon McNamara. Hello. 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 How are you? Good. My voice is a little raspy today. Wow, you're loud in these headphones of mine. I got on your side. Here, I'll I'll be a little bit further. No, 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 that's okay. Um, I appreciate you. I'm just trying to get everything rolling. I have uh, some people that are trying to listen through Clubhouse. I had Larry here. Is Larry, Larry, you're with me tonight. Is Larry here tonight? Yeah, Yeah. I'm here. Hey. How are you? So I'm doing great, Larry. So, That's Larry, good. you were with me, and we were trying to get this whole thing working. So, yeah. I'm working on that. So, you and Mel can just have a little conversation while I'm trying to figure that out. How's that sound? Okay. Mel, sure. Yeah. Mel, Mel just fluttered yeah. her eyes out. Yeah. Me. I'm, like, in a different headspace right now. I have really bad heartburn. And oh, if anybody no. has any sympathy for me, that'd be great. You can call into the studio, 781-837-4900. <laughs> Send me all of the sympathy that you, you have. But um, is, is, yeah, the, so, is the heartburn because you bought a new house? Are you having some? <laughs> pain because now you know you see how much money you have to put out oh my gosh yeah i i think it might be that that and i had one bite of mac and cheese last night and i'm lactose intolerant so yeah Yeah. i think i had i think it's the mac and cheese the 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 new house jitters will go away the new house jitters yes but and you're buying a house the same time that uh that i bought a house it was uh, christmas time so yeah go in and decorate it then move in around it (laughs) yeah yeah i um, when did you buy your house 1994. <laughs> 1994. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we're actually going to be talking about um, buying a house in 2024. Yeah. So what, 30 something? years later? Yeah. Um, but and I know right now it's 2023, but we're going to be sort of future forecasting because we only have a little bit of time left in this year, which is wild. But um, but yeah, maybe my heartburn is because I did close on my first house yesterday and um, today I got an oil change and I was told that I need front and rear brakes. So <laughs> there's um, that. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely an adult now. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, it, it, it's a good heartburn. It's a good heartburn. And we're going to tell everybody why. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we're going to be talking about um, sort of the home buyer's perspective of pros and cons of maybe buying in 2024. So we're calling it, should I wait? Should I buy? Um, we've done this show in the past. So you can sort of listen to all of our past shows on talkrealestateroundtable.com. Go to your podcast app, type in Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Um, But yeah, why don't we just sort of dive right into it? I think you're my co-host right now because Sharon's still (laughs) figuring it all out. But Sharon, stop um, fiddling with that thing. (laughs) Yeah, there's, you know, I think pros of um, what do you you say? Well, they were just saying that it sounded like it was very far away, but Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just see if they can test it again, just because the things weren't working. The iRig wasn't lighting up. Okay. Um, So pros of buying in 2024. What do we think? the, Go ahead, the mortgage it's rates. Larry, what do you it's, think? It's, a, it's the mortgage rates and the availability of properties because stuff is still, um, it's, it's on the market for sometimes a week and it sells. 
you know? Yeah. Depending yeah. on where it is. I mean, Plymouth is, uh, I keep an eye on Plymouth because I live down there. And uh, things are just, um, they're selling fast. And yeah. you're talking, you know, houses over $500,000. And you, you need to look at what the, you know, you know how much land is with it, how much your tax is going to be. And then you have to figure out, um, you know, you're gonna, you know, how much you're going to be able to put down, if you're going to put anything down on, on a house. A lot of people don't. But uh, I can't imagine not putting anything down when a house is seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. It's a scary um, figure in in the you know we don't even know what I haven't seen what the um, the home heating oil is going to be. I mean, last year gas was uh, my house is heated with gas and it was yeah it was very too very now. high. So <laughs> those are factors in there you know that you have to keep in mind. Um, yeah, actually, when um, I was doing my final walkthrough yesterday, Sharon pointed out there was a little note from the seller, and in the envelope was um, a breakdown of every every <laughs> payment that she had made in the past two years with electricity yeah. and with the gas and stuff. So it seemed reasonable, um, but yeah, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna hit me that I'm an adult now. <laughs> I had I had um, two months where the gas bill was close to three hundred with the wow. uh, thermostat down to maybe sixty when I wasn't home, and then up to sixty two. Uh, but we did we had a mild winter, so yeah. this winter, so far, um, I, I don't know where the, uh, the 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 price for heating oil or, or gas is going to be. I mean, gasoline has come down, but diesel's gone up. Um, so that may show kind of an average where heating oil would be. Um, and we're supposed to be having a really um, cold winter. I mean, they're yeah, talking about a snowy, a snowy winter. Um, I'm hoping that they're wrong. I'm hoping that it'll stay mild so that um, I can save money for other things that I want to do instead of just paying for the heat of the house. But those yeah. are important things because if you don't keep your house warm, then you wind up in other problems with pipes yes, freezing. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> Sam Horton sort of scared me a little bit last night. Yeah. He said, did you turn your heat up at your house? Because everybody knows right well, now you I know, live with Mary and Sam. And I was like, oh my gosh, should I drive <laughs> over there? Which is uh, three minutes. It's yeah. a three minute drive. <laughs> well, what I'm thinking about doing in, in my house is taking advantage of the new thermostats that um, you can log into. You know, for yeah. an app on the phone. Yeah, the Nest. And then, you know, see, you can see what the um, temperature is in the house and then adjust it. Um, there's a property yeah. that I'm involved in, and, and um, I'll just drive up there and adjust the thermostat if, if I need to. But I can log into the device. It doesn't control the, the heat, but it lets me know what the temperature is. And it's it's near the uh, first floor, the cold air return. It's a forced hot air system. So you know, I, I said 52 the other day. I had to go over there. Somebody had shut the heat off, but... Yeah. Um, Kristen Howlett, who is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, she does the show with me a lot. I think she's on next Tuesday with me. Um, she she even said to me today, she was like, you know, we have a Nest um, like thermostat, so yeah. she can adjust it on her phone. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon mentioned today having Mass Save coming out to my house, and you know they. That's the one I was thinking about. Mass Save has yeah, some, uh, Mass Save coming out. And they they save you there. a lot of money, you yeah. know. Oh yeah. Um, so. It's definitely it's definitely worth it, but you know, like you said, it's it's not just the mortgage payment at the end of the day. You know, you also have to factor in all of these, you know, other things like your heat, your electricity. I signed up for internet. Like I'm yeah. not gonna get cable, but yeah. I'm still gonna pay almost a hundred dollars in internet. You know, a well, lot. we can so you know, this is interesting when it comes to television now. You can stream a lot of things basically yeah. for free. Yeah. And you can put up a TV antenna outside the house. It yeah. um, doesn't have to be a great, big, gigantic thing. Aim it aim it the right way. And um, I, I pick up 70 TV channels for free you know, over the air. Yeah. Um, and they come in in HD. Um, and there's, there's many uh, channels on there that um, show a lot of the, the programs that I used to watch with, um, you know, with the cable package. Uh, I'm not home that much, so um, I, I can shut off one of the um, streaming services yeah. that gives yep. me some of the stuff that I like. So, And one of the streaming services that gives me a lot of things I like is like $25 a month. So, And then the Netflix has been, you know, under $8 with the ads. So it hasn't been oh, that much yeah. money. Yeah, see, I don't have the, I, I have the one that doesn't have the ads, but I feel like I'm going to have to come back. Yeah. <laughs> because I think now it's like almost $20 a month or something, which in reality, 20 gonna, bucks isn't gonna, that, that much. But when you no. have, again, with everything else. Yeah. They're going to go up anyway um, yeah. because of the the money they have to pay now to uh, actors and royalty fees and their movies and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, the, the free package was, uh, it's been like six ninety nine. I mean, not the free package. The, the one with the ads has been like six ninety nine. Yeah. Something like that. 
Yeah. Um, I definitely, I got, I was looking at my credit card statement and I saw, you know, six ninety nine or something for ESPN. And I remember like my brother texted me one day, oh, can you get me ESPN? I'm like, sure. It's only $7 a month. I'm cutting that off. I need that $7 now. <laughs> you know, you gotta make, you gotta make some changes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you, there's a, there's a ton of things that you can, you, um, watch on streaming and everything is, as long as you've got that internet, got to yeah. get the internet. It's not a choice. Um, but like I said, there's so many different, um, you know, avenues. When I had my, you know, initial meeting with Jasmine, um, who is my loan officer at Maritime Mortgage, she, you know, was like, oh, where are you comfortable with payment? And in my head, I had to say, okay, this is what I'm comfortable with this, but then factor in all the other things too. So like, at the end of the day, this is what I can afford type of thing. So every offer I put in, I think I put in eight offers. Um, (laughs) I had to, you know, factor in, you know, what my, what my budget was. And, you know, I say it all the time on the show, you really just have to be in constant contact with your loan officer because Mm -hmm. with the interest rates, you brought them up earlier, you know, they have been fluctuating, Um, you know, luckily, or, you know, the good thing, They've gone down recently, I believe. And, you know, even at my closing, Jasmine, you know, came to my closing with one of her team members and she's like, oh, don't worry. We're like, as soon as, you know, they get to a good point where Mm -hmm. we're refinancing. So don't you worry. Um, But yeah. And they think that rates are going to go down. So that's actually part of our conversation that we're going to uh, discuss as well for tonight. So, um, yeah. Larry, I just sent you a... Oh, okay. Then I just sent you back a text message. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're live on Facebook, too, so if you have any questions, again, we're just going to be talking about, you know, should you wait or should you purchase, you know, even if it's at the end of this year or or any time during 2024, um, you know, we're sort of... We do a show every year in December, sort of future forecasting, bold predictions, we call it. Mm. Um, so we're, we're starting it a little bit early even though we have a little bit more than a month left in the year but um but yeah big- I, i've been watching the real estate market around and i'm on a few different places that advertise you know they put up uh some of the older homes you know upstate new york yeah. and stuff some of the beautiful homes and you know if if you don't mind like around the buffalo area <laughs> i don't bring a big shovel snow blower yeah. or something but there are some beautiful old grand homes up in those areas oh, wow. And that you know they need maybe a little bit of work, but but the prices on them. You, you look at the prices on these, and you go, how can that be? Yeah, but, I know. Um, it's like I see in, a lot of that on social media. Yeah, like you know, on between Instagram, yeah. you know, because the algorithm it, yeah. it's got oh, yeah. me. Um, it knows the whole universe knows that I was buying a house. Um, <laughs> so I was getting. Yes, we all do. Of these, we all do. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting all of these, you know, ads and suggested pages and on TikTok and mm-hmm. everything. And yeah, some of these houses, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know. And I've and I I went to college in Florida, so I have a lot of friends that are still down there, and you know. They sometimes ask me for some real estate advice yeah. about, you know, oh, I'm selling my house, I'm doing this, I'm buying this house. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just bought a four bedroom house <laughs> on the golf course in a private gated community for, you know, three fifty. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Florida. I just I mean, believe it's it. different. It's a little different down there. Up in up in Vermont, I've been looking for, you know, an old farm with uh, barns and and mm-hmm. land, and then I would lease out the barns maybe to a guy who has cows yeah. or horses, and I don't have to take care of the cows and horses. I can just enjoy. Them. Having yeah. the cows and horses, but I there's a lot of like there's a lot of parcels, a lot of parcels really? up in uh, Maine, New Hampshire, in uh, Vermont that you know have a big piece of land that you know if you look into the right thing, it, it may it may basically cost you nothing after if you're allowed to develop some of that land, maybe hmm. build some two acre lot ho- homes, you know. So, and, yeah. and pay, Lara, pay for let it. me ask you this question. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to bring it right into our topic. Yeah. So, um, if you had the opportunity, if that property that you're looking for up in Vermont or New Hampshire came your way right now, would you wait until 2024 and sort of wait to see if the interest rates go down or would you buy it now? I I would I would wait for the interest rates to go down, but the problem with that is that um you know, they could it was a, a parcel of land that came up and I don't think there was anything on it and it looked like access to it may be through someone else's land. So that's one of the things that happens in Vermont. You got to look into that. And of course trying to get electricity or if you're going to go off grid, it was 250 acres of land for a hundred thousand dollars. And when I look back at it after a week, it was uh, already sold. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. fast, yeah, that's how fast stuff is going. going. Yeah. And a lot of that land is locked land. Um, there's a term for it up in Vermont. Um, 
so you can't develop it. It's protected, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. You know, yeah. it's, it's nice to it would be nice to, to keep it. Nice it'd be nice to have something there. on 250 acres of land, and I could say it's all mine. <laughs> and, yeah, and have a yeah, gate at the yeah. end of the driveway and not let anybody in. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So to all our listeners, you are listening to WATD and Talk Real Estate Roundtable. I am Sharon McNamara, and I'm here with Melissa Wallace tonight. And, um, of course, we have Larry in the studio tonight for us and with us. So thank you so much for filling in tonight for George. Um, And our topic is, should you wait until 2024? So should you wait to buy? Should you wait to sell? Um, Melissa sure didn't wait, and <laughs> she closed in well, almost like 20 days, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got that done. Um, and if you have any questions for us, Larry can get you right through to us. So the number to the studio is 781-837-4900. We have a couple other things sort of going on at the same time. So if you are watching us on Facebook, hello to all of our Facebook friends. Of course, you can send us a text message. And what is it called? A post, a question, or something, a comment. comment? <laughs> You can send us a comment on Facebook, uh, and I am trying, uh, Larry was in studio with me, and we are trying to do live on Clubhouse as well. So if anybody has any questions there, not sure if they can hear us. If someone can unmike on Clubhouse, if you can hear me, you can hear us. Is this Megan? Oh, perfect. Yeah, so you can hear Larry in the studio. So you're very, very low to me. She's a little low, yeah. Yeah, so I have to figure out what that is, Larry. I still have a red thing, but we're going to work on that as well. So I will be with you in a minute. So tell everybody why we're thinking about this topic. It's just this time of year and the holidays, and people will always say, Oh, I think I'm just going to wait until the spring. Oh, I think I'm just going to wait until after the holidays. I don't want to be disrupted during the holidays. We hear it all the time. Uh, one of the reasons why I did want to invite my friends from Clubhouse on is because a lot of them are from different places in the country. Uh, Megan, who we just heard from, Megan Gardner, she is from Long Island. Um, she is probably in the same predicament as us when it comes to seasons and people thinking, oh, I'm going to wait until the spring. Um, but we have so many other people that we're friends with on Clubhouse that are in warmer climates. And I wonder if they go through the same thing that we go through up here. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the last time we had some of the people from Clubhouse on, it was, it was different. Like it was mm. so different from us. But, um, we have a lot of snowbirds. So a lot of people who, you know, will go fly down south to, um, you know, warmer weather or somewhere where it's warmer because we, we do sometimes have some harsh winters. Um, and like Larry said, it's predicted that we might have one this year. Um, but, you know, I, I think every sort of place is different. And of course, our, you know, business is located in Massachusetts and we're really only, you know, talking about Massachusetts, but it would be great to get, um, you know, other perspectives throughout the, because, you know, maybe one of our listeners are thinking about being snowbirds. And I, I know that we usually do a snowbird um, show every year. Um, so we'll have to put that on the, on the agenda. Yeah, that's on our agenda. And that's one of the reasons why I've been trying really hard to get everything put together here with the Clubhouse app is because I've invited them to do, you know, a show with us when it comes to, um, to doing that. So, so let's get right into our agenda here. Um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Pros. Oh, this was your topic, pros of buying in 2024. I um, so, I mean, I, I can't really say it because I bought in two, 2023. Yeah. So you tell me, I mean, you bought in 2023, but was there a time during your process? I mean, we talked so much about you having buyer fatigue and sort of we went through like the emotions. It was almost like, you know, the emotions of whatever that you have to go through like yeah. a death I mean, of some sort you after know. after my closing yesterday jasmine um you know took me out to lunch um and we sort of waited to of course we had a mimosa um waited to hear that we were on record so we were sort of killing time we went out to lunch and um something that she said to me during lunch was i'm so glad that you didn't give up um, and she just kept saying that. And she, she said that, you know, every time I didn't get an offer accepted, she said to herself, please don't give up, please don't give up, like sort of putting it out in the universe. And, you know, I definitely felt buyer fatigue. I've been at it for, I don't know, six, 14, 16 months or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
with one accepted offer beforehand and you know it was almost a year to the day from having you know an accepted offer last year and closing on my house this year so it's a long time between two you know accepted offers and Mm -hmm. um yeah it was definitely getting discouraged you know with the rising interest rates that was really you know again being in constant contact with jasmine i just really had to focus on what i can afford and Mm -hmm. um you know it just this house came up it was your listing Mm -hmm. and i was able to see it and i just got emotional at my showing and i had i've never gotten emotional at any of my showings and i think it was because of my fatigue you know i said to you during my showing like i'm i'm never gonna get it like everyone's gonna want this house and you ended up getting 24 offers and to me that's everybody so you know to 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 feel sort of defeated before even giving the house a chance. Um, I am also glad that I I didn't um, give up. So it was nice to hear Jasmine say that yesterday. Um, And, you know, she's also saying, well, refinance, you know, she's, she's very hopeful in in projecting that the interest rates are going down. So, um, you know, yes, I purchased in 2023, but that was my journey and I wasn't going to give up on the opportunity to purchase this house just because I felt like, Oh, maybe something better was like, I, I even stopped looking at MLS. Like I Mm -hmm. didn't even look at MLS. Well, I was sending you things and then I wouldn't get a response. And I was like, Oh, I'm not going to touch it today. Then (laughs) you know what I mean? Like I didn't know what (laughs) every day was. Yeah. Every day was was a little bit different. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I, it was, it was emotional for me and, Mm -hmm. You know, especially doing it, you know, on my own, even though I had so many people in my corner, but financially doing it on my own, it was really important for me mm-hmm. to do it. And um, that's why I didn't give up. But, yeah. you know, I did obviously purchase a house yesterday, um, yeah. but I wasn't going to wait. But, you know, like I said, there was only about a month left. There is still time to get an accepted offer and yeah. close on something. Pr- I trust me, I know. Um you know, and and that's when you have a team on your side that's like on top of everything. Because mm-hmm. let me tell you, everyone over at Maritime Mortgage and mm-hmm. at Styles mm-hmm. Law were on top of it. Like mm-hmm. email after phone call. After Can you email give some after credit phone- to the um, to the listing agent on that? Yeah, one? I'll give you credit. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. the listing agent showed up to my closing. <laughs> yeah, we showed up to the closing. We don't even do that anymore, but we did for this one. It was special. But you know, as you were talking, one of the things that you said was, you know, that you were getting that fatigue and you were getting tired of it. And I think if a lot of buyers are saying, "I'm just going to wait until the spring." And you said you were up against 24 offers. Yeah. So guess what? If you're like, why give up? Because yeah. if everybody has that mentality, then you probably have a better chance. So let's just say, okay, there are 24 offers on the house. You put an offer in, so you got the house. So now there's 23 other yeah. people. Yeah. I do know I talked to Sue Bollinger, who's one of our full-time agents here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and her client put an offer in. And she um, got accepted on another something else. Nice. And Kristen Howlett, who's yeah. a full-time real estate agent here yeah. at Boston Connect, her client put an offer on the house you got. They got something under agreement. I mean, you guys, the, everyone around here, they're using some really, really good strategies to get their offers accepted. And I'm super proud of our agents all the time anyways. But there's less people in the pool. Yeah. And if... And if people decide to wait, this is a better opportunity for you as a buyer. And what you said was, Jasmine said to you, don't worry, as soon as I see that the rates are going down, we'll refinance you. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, um, yeah you will probably have a few months or a couple months, you know, when you're paying yeah. at the rate that you're at. But if they go down, at least at least you know what your payment is right now and you can afford that. You can't look back if the rates drop down to, let's say, 6%. They're never going to where they were before, yeah. people, yeah. ever. So yeah. just get that out of your head. That's not happening. Um, but if it does go lower, you can't... Don't go backwards in your head and say, geez, if I had just waited, I could have bought more of a house. I yeah. could have bought a house that had a newer roof. You can't do that. You've made your decision. I think you made a great one. And when you refinance, you could potentially do a cash out refi and do yeah. the roof and do some things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, like I said, it's my journey. Everyone has, you know, a different journey. And I I love the fact that Sue's client got something accepted. I knew about Kristen's client getting something 
accepted. But again, these are all buyers that are in my pool and my price range that we've been putting mm-hmm. offers and on the same houses that, through our mm-hmm. entire journey. So, um, you know, they're, they're, I, I don't, I, I can't stress this enough. There's plenty of buyers that are willing to, mm-hmm. you know, continue their journey into 2024 and make home ownership their dream. Yeah. And they should. And, and we're really should. happy that we're uh, getting people to that. So one of the cons, I mean, I'm, I'm going two ways right here now with our agenda because the pros of 2024, well, what I was just saying too about the buyers, like, okay, you're better off staying in the market right now and continuing on because a lot of buyers are saying, I'm going to wait until the spring. I'm going to wait until more things come on the market, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to wait to see if the rates drop, like Larry just said he would would do. But then now let's think about the sellers and the pros for the sellers. It's similar. What I'm going to say about sellers is sellers a lot of times will say, oh, I'm going to wait until the spring because right now it's the holidays. We'll get into that conversation a little bit deeper as well. And they are going to wait until the spring and spring for these people is April and May around here because they want their, yeah. you know, flowers blooming and all that, the grass green. Well, if you're a seller and you're thinking about doing it in the spring, it would make sense for you to put it on now during the holidays even. Yeah. And in the cold winter months, even if we're going to have a bad winter, because you're going to be one of less inventory because come spring, if that's when everybody else is thinking about going on the market yeah. now you're one of much inventory and now you have competition i would say a con for either a buyer or a seller is life is so unpredictable like mm-hmm. if you're always waiting for something better you're going to be waiting forever mm-hmm. oh maybe i said that to you oh yeah maybe. remember when i was holding Did 20 you? offers in my hand and you're like i don't even have a chance at this <laughs> yeah do you remember that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you're like hey, you aren't gonna out. help me <laughs> You better put in an offer. Oh, and I was God. like, fine. <laughs> and I went in my Larry, office and I put in an offer. Larry, it was okay. literally like a scene from Cher. You it, know, the one that she did in Cohasset? It's, it's not, yeah, it's not an easy, Snap out it's not it. an easy thing to do. I, I remember sitting in, in the bank with my mom and she wanted to refinance the house. There was a home equity line of credit and she wanted to refinance it. And the guy said, why are you not considering a 15 year? She said, I could never do a 15 year. I said, do the, do the, do the math. Came back with the math and saved my mother thirty five thousand dollars. Wow! In a 15, 15 year mortgage. But wow. here's the thing: if you if if you got the down payment, think about this: if you you want to wait for the rates to go down, go to go to a bank and and see what their uh, CDs are right now. CDs are really going up, and um, some of the banks are offering five point oh. I'm going to be moving some money into from one CD to a new CD in December. Um, and some of these, you, you some of these banks offer no penalty to take it out, mm-hmm. but that money can grow mm-hmm. while you're either looking for a house or waiting for the mortgage mortgages to come down. So if you've got a if you've got a down payment sitting in a bank and it's not doing anything, it's not making any money, you don't mm-hmm. have it in a high interest savings account. Um, look for a bank that locally some of the banks now have high interest uh, savings accounts, or fi- find a, a CD to put it into. You can probably get um, nine months to thirteen months on some of these certificates. Yeah. And one of the banks um, told me that yeah, next month we're offering a five point oh, and I'm at four twenty five on the one I have now. So hmm. I mean, th- 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 let that money grow and see if the rates come down. And I, I just have one of the one of the local banks in, in front of me with the rates at thirty year fixed. Uh, um, Let's see, six uh, seven five. Mm-hmm. Um, twenty. Yeah, but there's so many variables. Twenty yeah, seven. So yeah, yeah, yeah. fifteen so are at seven point one. So, yeah, matters I mean, what the rate is and all that. Yeah, and, and they're going to the, your credit score. Yeah, the credit score too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, I mean, they're, they're going to start. Uh, they're going to start to come down. I mean, yeah. they just can't stay where they are. But they another mean. thing, if if your credit isn't good and you're using a debit card for everything, stop using a debit card, use a credit card, use someone else's money, pay it off every time it comes in. If you don't pay off that credit card when it's coming in, maybe you should reconsider what you're buying yeah. and not buy That's the, that the right problem, now. though, with a lot of people is they have this instant gratification. And honest yeah. to God, I say around here, it's like it's like Christmas every day, every yeah. Amazon box that comes through the door. <laughs> so, yeah, but this that's a good idea. And I think what we'll do is we'll have Jasmine on and she can give us yeah. some ideas for people to, you know, make sure that they're building their credit and... You know, just watch what you're doing because this is the other thing that we've seen uh, some of the buyers do. They get buyer fatigue. They Mm -hmm. get all whatever wonky about it. And then they're like, I deserve 
a Louis Vuitton bag. I deserve <laughs> yeah. this. You know what I mean? And then they go out and they spend all this money and then they have all this credit card debt. So when mm-hmm. they're using the credit card, then when they go to get another pre-approval letter, when the house comes on the market, uh, they can't really afford Things what they change. thought they could. Things exactly. can change in a heartbeat when yeah. it comes to doing yeah. that. So I think we have Mary Baker listening in on Horton. Clubhouse. Oh, yeah, Mary Horton. Sorry about that. It's it's Jeepers. only been since June. I mean, yeah, she's only been married <laughs> for <laughs> five months. Not even. Mary Baker. I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can we can. Hear you. Yes. Is it, is and it's it Horton. Can you hear me? Good. Good yeah, grief. Mary Horton, guys. The both of you. <laughs> Mary, you even call yourself Mary Baker. Rude. I know, but I changed my voicemail, so that's what really matters. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I <laughs> you know. change everything else. Good grief. So, Mary Horton, um, for all of our listeners, you know who Mary is. Mary is my team member, um, and, Mary, and Melissa's a team member, so we're all just one big happy team here at Boston Connect Real Estate. And, Mary, I'm sort of curious because you have always worked with our buyer clients when it comes to that and I mean what are your thoughts I know that you were also doing a CMA today for one of our past clients what's the mindset of the buyers you're working with and what's the mindset of the uh, seller that you had in today I know he has to wait because of estate planning Mm -hmm. but what's Mm -hmm. the mindset I think for buyers, I mean, you guys are nailing it on the head. It is a lot of buyer fatigue. And especially this time of year, I feel like a lot of people's natural instinct is to kind of take themselves out of the running. Say, you know what? It's been a rough summer. It's been a rough fall. I'm going to go into the holidays and I'm going to reset. And where that's natural, right? Um, Because you kind of just want to, it's a slower time of year. It's probably the exact opposite of what you want to do or you should be doing because this is where opportunity lies. I was actually speaking with um, some buyers that we have purchasing a new construction property at our um, community at Cochise Estates in West Bridgewater. And they said, you know, do you feel as if, if I put my house on the market, is it going to sell? And I said, notoriously, my team and I have put a property under contract every December 23rd. So wow. holidays, holidays do not deter or stop the true buyers from being out there because they still need to move. They still need to go somewhere. And those are the ones that you truly want. You want the buyers who need to move and aren't just browsing or looking. And anybody who's willing to go out in a snowstorm really needs to move. Yeah. Yeah. And um, any realtor going out in a snowstorm <laughs> is a serious realtor, full-time <laughs> realtor. Right, Mary? Well, very much so. Um, I do have all-wheel all wheel tires on my car for that fact, <laughs> for that reason. Um, and same goes for sellers. So it is, I mean, there's no denying that is it is a tougher time of year to show your house, not necessarily to sell your house, but to show your house. So more effort gets put into it. There is potentially um, or perceivably more inconveniences, right? You have to, um, while you're worried about entertaining family and friends that are potentially visiting you, you're looking at, you know, I have to keep the house tidy for everybody to come through. And, you know, maybe I have to squeeze in a showing and Christmas shopping and what whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. It can perceivably be inconvenient, but still the buyers who are out there are the ones who aren't going to put in an offer and then get cold feet. Yeah. Or the ones that, um, you know, get to a home inspection potentially and want to beat you up. No, <laughs> no beating. Who no wants beating. to beat you no, up? No, 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 be- no beating. But like, but you, you yeah. know, everybody's like, oh, it's becoming a little bit more of a buyer's market. So buyers can go in and I'm going to negotiate at home inspection. That's still kind of false if I'm being completely honest. Buyers yeah. are having inspections, but they certainly aren't um, holding anybody over the rails, <laughs> so to yeah. speak, when it comes to negotiations. Yeah. What about price range things, Mary? Like, wait, what are you seeing with different price ranges? I mean, with the higher end homes that are in the in like the eights and nines and things like that. I know you were out with clients of ours just last week, and they were looking at houses that are like up to like one point two. But do you see lots of offers coming in, like multiple offer situations coming in on that? I saw one of the houses that they looked mm-hmm. at um, actually did go under agreement, so yeah. there must be a yeah. lot of buyers out in that in that price range. I really don't think that there's a price range that doesn't have multiple buyers looking in it. That doesn't mean that every range, in my opinion, is getting multiple offers every single time it lists, right? Like the property that we had looked at um, over the weekend, it has been on for quite some time. 
quite some time, but only because um, the it's not complete yet. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's it's working its way to being the showstopper house. So it requires a buyer who has a lot of vision and also a seller who's very um, um, determinant or adamant in his price point. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily think that so that particular property. No, it doesn't have multiple offers on it in this moment in time. But when it's finished, it will 100 mm-hmm. um, percent. Even with, you know, with our new construction properties, we have you see the same thing. It, ha- it requires the vision for the, for the buyers to really be able, willing to act. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't, I don't really think any one price range mm-hmm. I, is I, being hurt. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, Melissa, first time home buyer, multiple offers, yeah. you know, um, average, I was looking at this the other day, if we do an area market survey for properties, in Pembroke specifically between 500 and 600 average um, sale to list price ratio over the past six months is 108%, I believe. So that's Mm -hmm. 8% over list in your mid range. Yeah, I know. And then also with us with new construction, I mean, it's interesting too, because we have two developments for those of you who don't know that uh, we have Cushing Trails, which is 40 units in Hanson. And those are both townhouses. And my ranges start from 570 up to 630 as base price. And Mary is over in West Bridgewater and uh, 92 units over there. And that is a mixture of single family and duplexes. And the single family, I mean, once we opened up that phase, over on Blueberry Hill, um, yep. that really, really popped open, and it seems like mm-hmm. you're over there a lot. So there's definitely a lot. Because what is this? What are the price ranges over there starting at? So for our single families, we start at seven ninety nine to at base, and um, we're up to eight ninety nine. We do have multiple what we call spec houses, so properties that we have either completed and or are in the process of completing as well that we also have on market and mm-hmm. able to sell much quicker than your ground up construction. Yeah, and I think that that's appealing too, right, Sharon? We had yeah. this conversation with our builders earlier. It's and especially this time of year in new construction, it's m- that much more important to have a product to show. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, because I'd like I'd months. like some heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we've also done shows on new construction and the pros of buying the model homes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you get the best bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. I was <laughs> yeah, actually yeah point. reading an article today, and I actually sent it over to the builders today, and it was out of Forbes, and they were saying how new construction really is, you know, still st- is still strong and that it will continue to be that way. Um, one of the topics that I did want to discuss today too for like sellers, a lot of times sellers don't want to put their house on the market because this time of year, because they are thinking about the holidays and their decorations and the nuisance of people wanting to come in. But one of the things I love about having homes that are listed this time of year, and there's a few, is um, one, you really only get the serious buyers because mm-hmm. the looky loos are like, I'm too busy to like, <clears throat> yeah. if they're not really looking, then they're probably, you know, picking out a turkey right now. If they're not really looking in December, yeah. they're probably shopping for the holidays. Yeah. I feel like I, I closed on my house in a very difficult time the mm-hmm. week of Thanksgiving and I have, you know, the December to move, but you know, it's the unpredictable weather. Mm-hmm. It's the time that it takes to move. It's, you know, and plus I'm having it painted. I'm having mm-hmm. the floors redone, you know, so it's, it's restricting me from being able to fully move in right away. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and everyone keeps asking, are you excited? I'm like, yes, I'm excited. But I also, I think I will be even more excited once I'm in mm-hmm. it. Um, but yeah, it's like yeah. I said, like, but the serious buyer is going to close three days before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and it made sense for the seller too. And I think a lot of times offers are being accepted because we are thinking of those things. When does the seller want to move, Yeah, you know, and they wanted to move move pretty rapidly too so they were going on to that next chapter of her life and she is just 
sweet and adorable. Yeah. Um, so I really am an advocate. And to like even with the weather, like don't worry about the bad weather and you're worried about people, you know, bringing the snow and, and all that into your house. That's why we have booties. That's why we say take off your shoes. That's why you have a nice little cheap area rug for 10 bucks that you can get at, you yeah. know, big lots or something yeah. at your front door. But that's when the serious buyers are out there and that's when, you know, your house will sell. And this time of year, Mary, we've said this in the past too, and I specifically have John, uh, John M in my mind over on. Yep. Yeah. So like they were like, oh, maybe we think that we should wait until the spring. P.S. Spring for us. We looked up the Super Bowl is Sunday, uh, February 11th. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Late. It's mm-hmm. late this year. Yeah. So February 12th, that Monday is what we consider to be the spring market. So um Definitely, I want people to think if you're thinking spring, that's when you should be thinking, but you should be calling us now so we can do an analysis on your home and give you some ideas of different things to do uh, as you're preparing to get your house on the market. But a lot of relocation stuff happens at the end of the year and they they whip in and they say, yep, this is the house. I want to buy it and we'll see you in January. So. Um, I don't know. It looks like I don't have any other listeners. I was going to see if anybody on Clubhouse wanted to talk about uh, where they were with, you know, um, in their areas or neck of the woods. I can't really see my phone. If anyone is up on stage and they do want to talk about that, please uh, just let me know and just pipe in. You can just unmute your mic. Um, All right. So we only have a few minutes left. We have um, our event this weekend. Yes, Which we're really excited about. Yes, we have our pictures with Santa event. So yeah. um, the registration has closed. So hopefully um, you connected with your Boston Connect real estate agent and signed up for your free picture with Santa. Yeah. Um, but like I said, the registration has closed. We have reached capacity, which is mm-hmm. awesome. It's yeah. a good problem to have. Um, yeah, how many? Not like, that it's a problem, but um, over three hundred people, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, we have over three hundred people coming on Saturday. So um, for those of you that that did um, get the chance to sign up with your agent. Um, we have a lot of great things going mm-hmm. on. Pick, Santa himself from the North Pole will yes. be here. Yes, uh, You can write a letter to Santa. There mm-hmm. are um, plenty of uh, stories to be read. Uh, we have mm-hmm. story time. We have ornament making. Uh, yeah. You can make an ornament downstairs in our little workshop. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's, there's cookies and donuts and coffee and cider and hot chocolate. Mm-hmm. So plenty of things Things to do. Um, I think it's going to be a little chilly on Saturday, so warm no up rain. with no, no rain. rain. That's important. So, yeah. Um, yeah, dress you know, warm, dress warm, dress but and la- you, dress get, and layers. you get a nice little warm uh, drink to keep you. And then there's so much to do inside that yeah. inside the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, inside our house. Inside our house. So come well, on. And that's the other thing too is. Um, if you you know didn't get a chance to sign up for pictures with Santa, sometimes people don't come. But um, if you even just want to come and write a letter to Santa, yeah. we have you know all we kinds have a of special mailbox that yes. has a direct line to the North Pole. So yeah. if you leave your uh, Santa return writes back address, to every single person. That, if you leave a return address, Santa yeah who replies back. <laughs> yep, it is amazing. It's amazing yeah. how that happens. Yeah, so come by on Saturday. We're still debating. I want to do the show. Larry, they're suggesting I don't, but. But you know what? I do the show from eight to nine, and I really want to do it because I'm excited about Saturday. So yeah, it's gonna be loud, though. Yeah, it will be loud. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> guys, it's gonna be funny. loud. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, any final thoughts? We only have about a minute. No, left. Uh, Mary, we're not doing any open houses this weekend, correct? Um, so we are on Sunday, um, oh. just not Saturday for our event. Oh, okay. So I am working on Sunday. <laughs> I did not know that. So you will see me Sunday at uh, 10 to 12 at Cushing Trail in um, in Hanson. You can get there easily, uh, 486 Spring Street in Hanson, and you can see me over there at that new development. I have 40 units. And um, Mary, tell everybody how they can get to you. Yep. So I will be at Cochise at Estates um, from, on Sunday from 11 to 3 p.m. So we have duplexes and single families, price ranges and styles for everything. All right. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you to all our listeners. You can find all the information on bostonconnect.com. And um, if you can make it on Saturday, we will be here uh, from 9 to 12. Can't promise that you would get any pictures with Santa. We are uh, sold out on that, but we have lots of other fun things going on. So come and join us. Thank you, Mel. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Bye.